We'll wait until uh, 12.05 before we begin. Okay, I guess we can get started now. Um, welcome everybody to our second session of our speaker event. I will pass it on to Anand to begin the session. Anand, you can uh, get started when you can. Yep, you guys hear me? Yep. Perfect. Let me share my screen. Let me know when you start seeing it. Yep, see it. Perfect. Uh, okay, a second. All right, so thanks for everyone uh, dialing in and people who joined in. And thanks again for NG Nitrably giving me the opportunity uh, to speak on this topic. Uh, and uh, also last time uh, I spoke about um, uh, career or in cloud computing. So they're kind of related, but again, uh, it's a different career path. Um, and a couple of items, uh, as I said, always these kind of events, I want to make sure there is uh, uh, something in it for you, not for me. So make sure you ask me enough questions. And uh, within this, um, 55 minutes left, whatever, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, yeah, I'll encourage you to ask the question or I'll be asking some questions. And uh, and uh, from this topic, uh, I'll cover some of the market and then uh, take away from this session is, okay, how would you kick a start your career? What you need to be doing in terms of skill set and some insight from the industry, basically, that's which you would not find in academia and all that. So my point is, okay, depending which semester or when you're about to be graduating, uh, you may want to take some notes or some, as you're about to be going to the market in the next six months, whatever. So I'll try my best to give you that information. Uh, that being said, uh, let's move on. 
uh, if you go to um, internet, um, you will come across these different kind of terms, and the most common known is cybersecurity. Uh, if you tell somebody who is not into tech, they will immediately understand uh, cybersecurity. Same does apply to if you tell, tell them okay, what you're studying, if you tell them cloud, uh, your mom and dad may know, or you know, some of the relatives may not know even, right? So, but if you tell them IT, they, oh yeah, you're doing IT. So it's the same concept here. If you tell I cybersecurity, but still, if you're doing a specialization or some stuff related to AWS security or Azure or Google security or any other platform security, they wouldn't know what cloud security is. So that's, uh, but when it comes to career, when it comes to job, yeah, that really matters. What you do is depending um you know some of the basic knowledge and then you can develop your career based on that and same thing is uh, the third portion i have put is information security so a little bit difference um let's see if you go on because uh, I, I do uh, plan my presentation but not uh, like you know that's uh, it's, it's a live session so i'll, I'll see how, how i want to cover it but again as i said whenever you feel like you have a question please do put in the chat when it comes to security, this is the very first thing comes into our mind. It's hacking or it's something like that, you know, some bad actor uh, doing something. And uh, but how do you develop your career around that, right? So it's kind of kind of a cyber police or internet police and all that. But it's just way, way, way beyond that, right? It's not the one area where you want to have uh, hacking skills or something uh, to work against or to learn those and defend. But again, you know, it has grown. Uh, much better, especially in the last 10 years, I would say, since the beginning of this uh, mobile apps or cloud stuff, you know, there is uh, very exciting stuff to do. So security used to be known for that piece. It still it is. I can't, or we can't deny that, but there's a lot more to do that. So what's in it for you, basically? That's, that's uh, uh, my focus will be today. Uh, why cybersecurity? And uh, the job market comes from the business, from the investment being done in the market. You know that's why where the jobs get created and how we'll look into that. And then want to touch with some of the type of the threats, which you can also Google it. But again, you know, want to give you what has gone up in the last six months after COVID. Why there's a rise in the increase of those threats, right? That's important to know. And the job market itself. And then when we get to the meat of this, well, okay, how you wanna start your career? A little bit about myself. Uh, and um, one thing I wanted to, I don't remember, but again, you know, um, been in the industry for a while, um, uh, pretty much very uh, focused myself when I was in my college. Um, uh, I was decided, I want to be and up in computers. Um, and then I did um, my master from Georgetown a year ago and a half. And uh, I speak, so these kind of events I sp lately, I've been reaching out to both US and international universities. Uh, uh, we're trying to help the uh, students uh, what's going in the market. But usually my content is more of the time I'm speaking to international and, and US uh, Microsoft related events, a lot of security and uh, uh, cloud computing related stuff, but uh, uh, that's move on. So why consider a career in cybersecurity? Because uh, um, being in the industry, especially if I check the last eight, 10 years, I've been very focused uh, on cloud. Cloud market is still hot, but I think of this way when the cloud migration or cloud projects are done, every large enterprise. So it's not going to go away, but you keep doing the same thing. You say, okay, I want to do something different. And I already had a security mindset for, I would say, I wrote some papers and all the back end, like many years ago, more than 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so I always had that uh, level set. You know, I look at applications, I look at products, I look at things uh, from that side of it. Okay, now how is it going to be secured? So that's there. And then lately, when I look at a lot of adoption uh, in the cloud, and I was my concern, okay, cloud, there's a lot of gaps. Like people are coming from traditional infrastructure doing the cloud without knowing enough knowledge. And that's the gap is there. And that's why you need to consider your career in cybersecurity. 
So it's for both somebody who is the freshest starter and somebody bringing their experience. It, it's they're the market for both. So, right. So we'll see by going forward. Uh, let's move on. So that's the market research. I shared this slide uh, in the previous, but it's the same thing. Why and why it is important because that it's kind of give you sense because what Adnan is talking, it's not me. It's the market is saying. So you don't have to trust what I'm saying. I mean, if I appreciate you listening. But again, if you need a proof, right, go Google it, you know, so those are the data I'm representing here. Why? Because the companies are investing tons of money because and for a reason, right? So when they are doing uh, this investment and that's why there are skills are required, a new skill set required, right? So that's why uh, these market data helps. So you don't have to read every day or every morning, maybe once a week or every couple of weeks, depending so you know, you know, uh, uh, what what's going in the market and it really helps to project, you see yourself, you know, you may not wanna work for a technology which is going to be obsolete, for example, BlackBerry, nobody knows BlackBerry today, research in motion, right? Uh, the, you know, so if you build those skills back in days, you know, become a mobile expert, mobile device management guru, now that the skill doesn't really exist, right? So it happens, but you know that's why in, in you know you need to be uh, uh, updated, you know, regardless of the, what's going in the market. So that's uh, companies are investing millions and millions and billions in those, and that's why the market is going towards. And we'll see how it's going to work and help you guys uh, uh, move forward in your career. So this is the important topic, right? I pulled this slide a couple of months ago. I was presenting in another session, but uh, there is a um, uh, 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 huge increase in the attack. Um, and that's the number I remember from July, not from today. I didn't get a chance, but as per July, there was an increase from March to July, 600% increase in the cyber attacks. Because imagine when people start working from home, uh, these devices, their computers are not secure. Their firewall, router, they don't have that. So corporate device was a different device. People used to work in the offices. They were secure, secured infrastructure, secured network and firewalls. So as soon as they worked from home, it opened a whole bunch of uh, a gap. And that's why there was an increase. So, an attacker do not need to attack those offices. They just uh, target those innocent users, use their machine and then launch the attack. And those attack could be any kind of attack, you know, password stealing, email phishing, fraud emails, you name it, you know. So now um, companies are putting, you know, uh, controls and policies, implementing new technologies. So with the increase in this type of attacks, there is um, increase um, in the in the in the skill set, which basically goes back to my question of uh, increase uh, in the cybersecurity career. Okay, let's move on. So while I keep moving on, have anyone of you come across or read anything around? These kind of attacks know of anything. Feel free to type it in the chat. All right. Oh, let me move on. Okay. So this is okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Keep, you keep typing in the chat. I'll, I'll I'll come back. But when you go to security, one of the biggest problem is too much data. Right, too much data means too much, too many log files. So when you, even if you're using computer, let's say it's very simple to look at those log files in Windows 7 and Windows 10. You go to the systems event logs. It logs your boot up time, your login, and everything, and which is legitimate, right? So how would you make sure out of those so many um, valid events, what are the events which are critical? and which you need to be monitoring, right? So when you imagine if you work for a company which has 5,000 employees worldwide, in that situation, you need some systems. And this is where you need to controls and you need to be tweak your devices or tweak your monitoring platform, security platform. And this is where it comes, this thing IOCs, which is intent of compromise. 
and something also called intent of so intent of compromise okay if somebody a security vendor or product have seen those attacks in the cloud or internet they publishes some of this um, hash algorithms so you can update in your files or your monitoring or security system so which will block them automatically so that kind of a system you need you cannot just monitor you know so you need some machine learning and ai and automation okay these are the known patterns going on in the last 48 hours and then you buy that product from that vendor and then you apply it right so why i'm telling you this because this is connected to your skill set because if you become an expert on those products from the vendor and there's a job you know that so your chances are more getting hired because you know that so for example if somebody say you know uh, there are some products um i uh, there are many products but the one i come to my mind maybe for example semantic security products there are some from rapid seven some of them qualis you know there are a number of uh, if you google it you'll find them so endpoint protection there, there are products also in that category so basically there it helps you know so knowing those um, right tools and technology really matters i'll talk more about it this is theft of personal data why it is important especially during covid as i told you There's an increase. So these attackers are launching. Basically, what they do is they do the social engineering. You probably, I'm sure everybody must have seen those kind of email which doesn't look right. And people do mistakes uh, depending on the knowledge. So if you click on that, hey, you know, uh, during the tax season, you'll see a lot of emails coming for the tax. So did you file the tax? And you did not file the tax. Sometimes during in April, you even get a call on the phone. Even I do get it. Hey, you know, if you do not uh, this in IRS and blah, 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 if you don't do it, there will be a penalty. But guess what? IRS never ever call you. So they also send you this email. So the moment you click those emails, they look like the actual sender. And then you go to the web page and then ask for the credentials. And boom, that's it. You put the credential, then gone. Your credentials are leaked now, right? So that what happens that this is what kind of uh, training, what kind of skill sets, what kind of social um campaign so that's what happened in the corporate world that's what happens in the job market you know around that so that's side of um the skill sets are required and i'll get i know i'll get to the point where I'll, I'll get you more details on that but you need to understand what it looks like in a job what it looks like when you go for your first or second job whatever you know whether you're transitioning your career you're starting there and you're there are different 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 roles you know uh within even the security so data breach is very very common and this is in demand because there's always a motive for those attacker uh financial motives they have so that's why they do it have you come across have you seen any news around those if not then i'm sure you must have heard about so many scam emails perfect and i'm sure you must have um, known about those uh uh capital one and uh, there was uh, some EQFX data breach happened. Um, and uh, ransomware is very common these days. Yeah, so those are the examples. Uh, but usually they target the companies or their companies, the senior leadership or those kind of people, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you heard that news about uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, I believe. WhatsApp account got hacked. I don't know, but. You know, this is very common type of life, basically. So we can move on. Um, all right, so I wanted to give you some high level. Uh, we'll not go into the details of all these attacks, but email attack vector has gone up and the website. And it's social engineering. So many people um, easily you can uh, make them click those email and you do the credential leak. So imagine if you have a Gmail account, your password and username is leaked. And that's it. There you go. You know, you, what control you're going to put on top of that? There are, but many of the people I know, they don't do it. And even they are not even aware of it. So, and then guess what? In those Gmail accounts, uh, people have the company data. You have your text document. You have your personal videos, audios, family things, even your maybe paycheck. I don't know. This is very email, right? So how do you protect that? If you click on that and your credentials are leaked, 
and people use also for their small businesses. They use email accounts. They don't use uh, proper um, uh, you know, paid version or paid subscription. And this is what happens. Even in, even in that consumer level, there are some controls available uh, that can be implemented. But that's again, people need to be more educated. You know, security cannot be uh, done without the help of the people. It's a community led driven thing. It's not a control I can go in place. Uh, you can easily make people do the same mistakes again and again. And I've seen it every time, a lot of time. All right, so cyber threats. Let's look into the cyber threats, which I just been talking about throughout this uh, conversation. Uh, different type of attacks, right? So that's where um, you know uh, cyber threats, and then um, I want to touch base this topic. Uh, why? Because of uh, increase on public storage. What I mean is that OneDrive, Box, One Box, OneDrive, Google Drive, right? Um, and that really people do not secure it, do not have control. Some people, they put the data in those uh, public shared drive without having any access control, like anonymous. What it means, everybody can copy the data. So these are the stats from the market that 94% uh, of uh, Corona related attacks were discovered were phishing attack, which I told you before, like phishing. If they send you phishing email, they fish you. And then you click on those link and damage is done, basically. I hope uh, none of you have done that and never ever click on any email of it does not look familiar. Any questions so far? No one? Okay. Look, your security expert are here with me. All right. So I've seen a number of time here, uh, this board in Jersey, that there are more than 5 million jobs or 6 million jobs available by 2022, 20, 23, right? So, and that sounds true because uh, if you look at Department of Labor and all those data and statistics, there is a need, huge need for people with those skill set. So it's very easy to get into it and make sure um, you're gonna try that. And also, if you wanna grow a new career, you you find you need to find your passion. Also, that's also important. So let's look into that. Some of the security and non-security related jobs, basically. So I don't know what the fresh grad salary these days. Somebody can type in. I believe 60k you usually get when you write outside the college. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, then there is a step you want to move on, right? Every year, every couple of years, you deserve to uh, have a better salary, right? Now, uh, why not, right? And you got to have a plan because once you graduated, let's say next year, I would say think plan yourself in the next five years to double your salary. And this is quite easy <laughs> and possible. You can, if you're 60K <laughs> in three to five years, I don't see why not there's a reason you should be making 120K. But you need a plan. You need to be getting those um, right direction and right tool sets, which I'll try somehow summarize this uh, 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 today's session that you know will kind of give you some direction, which help you move forward. But the reason I'm putting it here, uh, if you even if you're coming from any one of these directions, you can still end up your career in security, right? So let's say if you start your career system engineer, you know, uh, you're doing um, graduation in technology or in IT, right? Uh, you may find yourself more interest, maybe Linux and Windows and operating system. You can start your career as a system administrator. It doesn't mean that. Excuse me, guys. Sorry. <coughs> so. Uh, <clears throat> you will learn about operating system and network. And whoever starts the career, I always tell them, you must have to have, I repeat that, must have skills where you have full understanding of operating system and network. If you really want to have a solid career, make sure you understand the operating system, make sure you understand the network. Because in secure, you can start even without knowing anything in security. 
from day first, but that you will also start learning there. So I'm saying uh, you can go wrong, whether you start your career as admin into the network admin, then you become an engineering role, then you can go to the network architect, you could be a cloud architect, you could be a systems architect. Uh, then that type of experience you have, then you will not be starting your career as a security analyst, you may have some of a more senior role depending, but these things uh, are there. Even you can come from the software development area uh, if you're good at programming. So there's a lot of DevOps career. So today we call it um, um, uh, uh, um, DevSecOps, Developer Security Operation DevSecOps. So the developer needs to now understand how to write a secure code. Their application programming interface APIs. This is hard these days. Uh, so, we're trying to explain again. You can go wrong, right? You can always start directly in security, or you're coming from different background. They're all going to help you those the skill sets. <laughs> so, and then um, so now um, let's move on. And uh, any question, I can move on to the next topic. Before I move that, this is the uh, cookie joke. If you can tell me what cookie do I mean, and if you can type the answer, do you know what cookies are? Anyone? You get them every day, believe me. Even now we're on the call, somebody browsing. So basically, yes, exactly. Somebody said, okay, yeah, it's good. As I said, you know, you just need, there is no right and wrong answer. You just, whatever comes to mind, just write it. That's what I like. Uh, you need to be participating it. So cookies, yeah, cookies are based in their browser and that's how they market. That's how they monitor you. So let's say if you go look for Google and if you're going to buy some Adidas and Nike, and some brand new shoes, $200 ones, right? The moment you switch your browser or mobile app or Facebook on your mobile app at your home network, you'll see, start seeing those ad. Same thing maybe on Instagram, right? So that's coming from the cookie. So they read your cookie from the browser. They know your IP address of your order. And based on that, they do the marketing. So now all of a sudden, you start seeing all these ads on every freaking app you use. So they, they, know, so they, they, they know your data, right? So that's coming from the cookies. So cookies are basically in the browser. So they know what type of browser you use, what time zone are you in, what version of uh, device you have, Windows or Mac, you know, all that information is in the cookies. And um, you can even go more than that. That's why there are some European laws uh, where uh, you start noticing, I'm sure you must have noticed some website where you go, they ask you to, accept the button, do you allow cookies or not, right? So if you allow them, then these cookies can reside in your system for up to 30 days or 90 days, right? So that's how all web technology works. All right, let's move on. Okay. Uh, so how can you start your career, right? Uh, Anyone has, before I move on to, because the next slides, I will be very specifically talking about different roles. Uh, but let me ask you a question. If you're, if you're applying for your job, you've done your bachelor's. What are the first things you would, or what is the just very first thing you will be doing? I'm sure you're looking for doing the job hunting, but what else? Any, anything comes to your mind, hey, I should be doing this. Help me understand what's your process. Okay, keep going, keep going to start a business in the future. Okay, so I'll move on. 
more research in the field. Okay. All right. So if you go to the website, uh, there are a ton of Department of Labor. You'll find cybersecurity related jobs. And uh, if you look at the job description, so before, let's say, you want to apply for these jobs, right? Uh, indeed and whatever. Uh, you need to understand what's the ask, what employer or what market is looking for you in terms of skill sets. So you have a four year degree, but how do you make sure you have? They will hire the fresh grad. So either you go and get on the job, learn those skills, or what skill set if you wanted to be on top of that on your degree, for example. That comes from when you go look for some roles, you'll find out, okay, this is what they are looking for. So that's a very important piece. Uh, because you need to understand what's this uh, skill set requirement, basically. And here is the median salary, right? So uh, entry level education, less than five years experience, number of jobs available, and uh, salary range, as I said, you know, uh, could be anywhere 60K, 70, depending, because the median pay is not about fresh grad, right? So you should have some experience less than five years mean you could have at least two years of experience. But if you're fresh, then yeah, as I told you, the minimum salary, we all know that. But you want to move on, you want to move with those careers. So how do I get started, right? That's the next question. So if you go back, or if you imagine the slide which I mentioned, CyberSec, InfoSec, and Cloud Security. Uh, they will help you, uh, and there is some more of an operation job, some of them more on um, architecture engineering. So you will know when you get more experience, but again, operation job is, and this is a good area to start with, like a penetration tester. Uh, it's, you'll enjoy like you explore, exploring or assessing uh, the system for the vulnerabilities. So this is an exciting where you will go or you will learn basically how to scan systems. And with that number of tools available, uh, you can scan a Mac machine, you can scan a Windows, whichever. And those tools will tell you, hey, you know, this machine has this many vulnerabilities. So basically there is a job for such role companies hire and they tell them, okay, you are a penetration tester. You will be running tools against their customer's environment, and then you generate those reports. So there are proprietary third-party companies, tools available, as I told you, Rapid7, Qualys, Semantic, many others, if you happen to work with them. Um, and then you can also learn from open source, open source tools at your home lab. If you wanted to make one, you can set up the environment, and that's really a good skill set to have. Um, in those because why? Because the answer to this why is uh, because you need to, when you set up this kind of scan, for example, there are companies who regularly do that. Some of them they do weekly, some of them do monthly, depending on the nature of the business and why it is important. Because you need to then fix those machines, fix those VAB, otherwise they will be hacked. If there's a vulnerability of the backdoor accesses, well, if you fix it, guess what? You will be hacked, you will be compromised, you will be breached. So that's why companies hire third party companies where you end up working and uh, then, um, uh, you know, they pay them and then you run those reports and then those companies needs to fix those. And also as a part of become the compliance and audit and all that stuff involved. So that's uh, good to have a skill, you know, you should be knowing when you're looking for your career uh, you need to understand all the vulnerabilities and gaps because every time they upgrade, like even for iOS, mobile device comes up with upgrade, they do some security fixes. So this is where it's coming from, right? I hope you get an answer, or get an idea what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, feel free to put your question if you have any confusion. Uh, another area you can start, as I told you before, you can come from network and system administrator, right? Uh, you can work for any company depending uh, even in COVID people work from home but it's still 
you can be part of the team who manages the network. So if you work for a company here in New York City, uh, even though you're not going to the city, but still uh, remotely, you can manage the people dialing into the VPN. So you can have a set, you will be doing the uh, management of the network, troubleshooting on the network. People have issues with antivirus. People have issues with uh, the internet connection. People may have, have issue with their local VPN websites, you know, so this is a very exciting role basically. And it doesn't really change with the cloud. It does, but it's not depending, you know, where you are at your, uh, but for you guys, you know, uh, it's, it's a must have a skill to know about a network and computer system without knowing that. Um, yeah, certification, I'm coming to the certification for sure. I'll cover that and after maybe 10 minutes vacation stuff. So, uh, yeah, so basically uh, hands-on important, right? So you can always start with this even at your home. If you have three computers with your sibling, whoever, you know, you have a firewall, don't mess it up. You don't want to block your internet. What I'm saying to start research to and start trying to make your lab or something. Uh, if you use a MacBook, understand, okay, how does the MacBook work? If you have Windows 10 or 7, Understand how does it work? How does iOS work? Uh, you're you're connecting your device on home on Verizon or whatever the wireless connection you have. It automatically gets an IP address. So what's the DSCP? How does it get an IP address? What are the MAC addresses? How you can block? So your your home network could be a good uh, learning uh, environment for you as long as you do not break it. You know. So uh, but make sure you understand before making any changes. Read enough. Study enough. And then you can start, let's say here, saying network backups, or you can make the backup of your MacBook to an external drive, you know? Um, so you don't really have to excuse, you know, just buy the flash memory, flash drive, 256 GB, and start backing up your home router, and start backing up your devices, you know? You, you can always be creative. Then have us in each and every machine at your home. Uh, Pop-up blocker, ad blocker, so that's how you can start learning. Uh, then once you spend, let's say, two, three years, the next move, you may be going to be going into engineering role because architect role, um, you need somebody with at least five to seven years minimum, bare minimum uh, experience when you go to the architect role, depending if you worked on those projects, some people, or some area, if, if they have not worked, they're stuck at a role for desktop support engineer for seven years, nobody will hire them as a cloud or security architect because you need to prove those when you are at the interview in your resume. You know, it's, it's a process. It's a, it's a ladder step, step by step process. Uh, but again, you can achieve it. Somebody might have achieved in 50 years. You can achieve it maybe in 10 years, right? Uh, depending how much time you do it, you, what's your vision, what's your goal? It's all doable, but of course not in two years. Hey, I'm an architect for this now. That's BS. And then you can go all the way to the senior leadership level, which is in the information security officer, like a CIO, a CISO is the top role. Um, and then there you don't do a lot of hands-on, of course, but you make decision and policies. But that person coming from the hands-on experience, coming from those all the way up, really make a big difference uh, when it comes to leading those practices. So that's really matter. So you should envision yourself, right? you know, in the next three years, five years, hey, I wanna be 20, 20, 30, okay, 20, yeah. Three years, 2023, uh, if you start your career next year as a fresh grad, put yourself, you know, next three years, you wanna be security engineer, system engineer along those lines. And then start thinking about what does it take for me to get there? What certification do I need? What skill sets do I need? Right? So that's you need to start planning and make your goals and recheck it every every quarter. Right? You need to uh, keep track of your performance. That's very important. So uh, um, exploring the job market, as I told you before, uh, will will go and look into the job market uh, for, let's say, let me bring Indeed here. I look for information security. 
information and security analyst. And then I'm gonna put something entry level. Yeah, entry level, okay. All right, so let me try to pick one of them. What does it say? Requirements, three years of experience, we don't need that. And it's for somebody who's a fresh. But I think this one looks like it. All right, so they need knowledge. I mean, they are not asking you for any hands-on. They want you to, okay, as long as you understand the Linux system, as long as you understand um, access control analysis, Linux shell scripting. Yeah, but again, it doesn't mean so as long as you say, okay, you understand. That's the key point, right? They are not seeking for you to have hands-on. And because they, they, they know that you're fresh, yeah, then that's why the job uh, is open and that's the expectation and you should have bachelor's degree uh, RSA provision I don't know what RSA is but uh, you can google it uh, able to diagnose so this this kind of a skill you can learn at your home basically as I told you before you need to understand network IP addresses DNS and all that stuff so when you're at the interview you can tell you know how these things work you know how, how does the internet work basically this could be a question in your interview call the internet basically works on DNS. Okay, what is DNS? Domain name services, right? So, so now your next question will be, okay, where am I gonna learn all of these? Because I'm not necessarily you're gonna learn all of them um, in your university college, I believe. They will teach you computer architecture engineering. They will teach you maybe algorithms and encryption and all that, right? Those kind of stuff. They will teach you data analysis, algorithm, data structure, that kind of thing. But when you're in the market, right? So those are the area. So DNS basically and all that stuff. So when you're doing four years, it's some more of engineering or in depth behind the scene. But when you come to the market, basically, you need to have a skill on top of that. Um, so let me cover that. Let me see one more. What are they looking for? They're looking for the skills, but uh Okay, so I think it's an entry level again, expanding your career through experience, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is what you will be performing. This is what you will be doing in analyzing the volume of the network flow. So this is what I told you before IOC and all that pattern characteristics. So for that kind of skill, you need to know okay, what those look like. So uh, I'm still looking for in this job, what is the expe expectation from the candidate? Uh, Looks like they're gonna train you, I guess. They don't, I don't seem to be, they're saying this is what you will be doing. I'm not sure, I'm not clear right here. Uh, but um, yeah, if you're in a position like this, do apply for this job and ask this recruiter, okay, you're gonna provide some training or what's the expectation, all that. So never hurry about, uh, never be bothered about that. So here they need two point two and a half years of experience. Um, one year required experience in this job so okay so let's let's i think it's a good a good area to um you tell me uh, while i'm looking at uh, somebody with one year one year one year experience and somebody with a fresh grad i'm still trying to figure out if they have something with a fresh grad which i don't seem to have anything but uh, uh type in the chat box Is anyone there? Uh, maybe something like they do have junior positions, right? Where do you read that? Like I'm, I'm just like uh, airballing, sort of. Like, um, sort of like the typical, like some of what you showed us, um in the previous slides like maybe like junior level positions of those uh of what you showed us yep let's see this one 
Engineer information security. Okay, what you will do? Okay, so here. So they they putting a junior, but yeah, I have the solution for this, right? Why wanted you have uh, something coming from you guys? You know, what, how do you see that? Uh, you know, I can definitely um, add some more here, but still, I want to have. Look, how would you handle the situation, right? Uh, uh, if you come across, and what would be your approach? Anyone type anything, you know, whatever comes to your mind. I want to know what's your mindset how do you think about it like cyber security related problems correct like just problems in that ilk um because I'm, I'm just trying to get a clearer picture yeah so let's say i'm here basically if you have run into this and applying for a job uh and all these jobs have some sort of, so what will be thought process, you know, uh, getting a f job as a fresh grad, basically. Oh, you mean like, like the uh, actual like process of trying to find a job. So yeah. Yeah. like trying to match things up with your degree and your uh, like concentrations and everything, and like maybe pulling from your experiences of what you've done. Because, like, you know, um, your degree consists more of, like, your degree isn't just, like, your major, but it's also a lot of the stuff you did. So, like, if you were, if you were looking for a cybersecurity role, maybe, like, pulling from stuff like this presentation and maybe, like, some hackathons you might have done in the past to see, like, what they would need for um, certain jobs. Mm, yeah, okay. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah. So you mentioned the word hackathon or something, right? So you need to be having a combination, right? With your degree and all that. So here, I wanna give you some real example in this particular job, I think. Uh, they need some qualification, comfortable, high level and use including VP. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, first job here, they have a uh, business analyst. No, I'm looking at the wrong job, right? So. We're not looking for a business analyst compliance. Uh, okay, so so okay, so challenge is here. How are you gonna get a job without? So they need some sort of an experience, right? So basically, that's what I'm trying to help here. Okay, um, here you go, and they pretty much even their junior job, um, they need some sort of an experience which is true because they're hiring. Otherwise, you may be doing some internship. You can get some experience through internship. Uh, so now uh, with that said, uh, either you get a chance to work through the internships or uh, best way to start with the company where they have security operation center or NOC, SOC and NOC, Network Operation Center and Security Operation Center. Uh, it's remote, whichever it is. So basically, this kind of place could be a good start, and you will always end up doing your first level of job in tier one, which is my level one support. Uh, but again, uh, uh, depending on. Uh, so if you look at the content here. So this is you can also learn while you're in the job because the, the, the difference or I'm trying to help uh, get into those level one kind of job, but do not, it, it because it's the job title versus the nature of the job. So you may be doing some support, but do not be stuck in a support job because when you're doing a four year degree, uh, you bring more, uh, the level of knowledge and things you have gone through. I, I know there are so many things you'll find degree versus skills and all that. But if you're doing the degree, you don't want to end up just doing a help desk and IT so for the next three years. You may want to do it for the next six months and that's it. Then you got to move on. Because that's very important. But otherwise, why did you invest this much money? So you want to keep moving. And that happens uh, maybe for six months, you're like you're lucky not enough. But then how you, you need to apply for big Fortune 500 companies 
the work culture training environment is very different they give you training and all this everything but to get to the point uh basically you need to have uh, those things you may not even have a skill but you mentioned about the certification that i'm going to come back and talk to you around that so if you look at any of these uh you want to start a career in any of these um then you need to have some skills and those skills you need to have some certification so you may can learn developing your own lab and everything but when it comes to the skill sets uh, what I'm going to show you now, you can always start with, uh, I believe, uh, this one. Um, hold on. Comp Security Plus, right? Uh, so when you, even you do not have experience, if you are certified, for example, but you tell on the, on, on the job, because in this type of course, which is not specific to a vendor, what I mean, not specific to Microsoft Azure, or AWS or Google, but they will tell you generalized because this is very important security because operating system could be anything, Windows and non-Windows and Unix, right? So then you will learn about different types of threat and vulnerabilities, what tools, how to install them, how and what it does look like in architecture diagram, which is important, which where you will learn the flow of traffic, flow of data, when you're setting up an email on your cell phone, on your iOS device or Android, how does that email works or connection works, for example? backend with gmail and microsoft right uh, what protocols are involved in that so if these are basic level of knowledge and when you have that really it can help you um in your job even getting your chances to hire faster identity and access management very good beautiful nice word i it looks pretty uh, what you call cosmetically you know word identity access management but it's about uh, layman term is, is your username and password, but when it comes to large enterprises, there are thousands of users. How do you manage them? So uh, it will give you okay, what controls are there, password policies, multi-factor authentication. You can apply location-based policies. So basically, you kind of have understanding for this type of course, uh, what are those? And then risk management. So basically, if you do that, uh, it will give you a value because you understand the risk also. You're putting the data in the cloud, is there risk or not? Like cryptography and public key infrastructure. Uh, you set up a wireless network at your home, uh, but you can also deploy some secure certificates. That's what really happens um, you know, as a second form of authentication uh, in a corporate environment. So you cannot go wrong uh, if you take uh, country certification, uh, which uh, I always prefer any junior to do it. And also, if you go to the SENSE website, and um, SENSE or also has a ton of uh, courses. And then if you go in there, dig into that. So do you see Blue Team is like, a, uh, is a cyber um, uh, uh, team where you are always, uh, if, you, if you like that kind of work, you want to be, you know, um, detecting, protecting, hacking and all that. So blue teams, companies form blue team like Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, Adobe, you name it. They have their dedicated teams who monitor these operation 24 seven. If you click on that, then it will bring the courses, you know. So then if you go to the course syllabus, for example, which I'll give an example now, what you will learn. So you will learn about this thing. System information event management. This is my my first slide where I was telling you about the logs. So this system will uh, massage that log and give you uh, the events which are related to security. So this is where the AI and machine learning works, right? Uh, then they will teach you this, this, this. So you, these kind of courses are expensive, so you can have your employer get you certified. So. So you don't have to take the course. I don't know how much does it cost, but give an example. This will give you the direction. What is your network? Understand your network, DNS, HTTP, SMTP for email. This is very important. Um, I've done large project around those email area in my career. We're one of the very biggest uh, worldwide. Uh, you will learn about the router security, VLAN, right? So this could be your, I think if you wanna have a career direction going forward in the security, I would say go through the syllabus of this particular course and make sure within, I would say three months, I don't know, it's too aggressive. Try to understand. It's not whole, a lot, this is a repetitive stuff. How does email work? If I send you an email, how does it work? So when you become a job, 
for information security analysts, you will be analyzing the headers. And that's a very interesting job. And that's really uh, growth, uh, career growth in that kind of job. This is hard in the market. People look for these skills. So with that course, you, you see, uh, and endpoints also an endpoint mean your desktop, you know. So this could be uh, one of the area you may need to start looking into that. So what I'm gonna do now, give you like two minutes if you have any questions. Uh, then we'll wrap it up, and then we're good to. Uh, we're pretty much done for today, I guess. I hope I tried and did my best. I'm not sure. Depending on you, if you like it, let me know. Um, and then, yeah, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me later. Any questions? I have, I have a uh, I have a small question. So, um, the, uh, I I was wondering, like, um, cybersecurity analysts they typically work with securing like um, pieces of software, correct? Yeah. Okay. Because I was more of um, uh, as a computer engineer, I was always interested in like working with firmware and stuff. So. As a, if, as a cybersecurity analyst, would you, how would you, how do cybersecurity analysts work with um, certain hardwares and stuff? Because I know, like, security depends, like, certain measures of security will uh, depend on what kind of machine you're working with. Yep. No, that's a very valid, good question. So you may start looking into IoT, wearable devices. They all have firmware, right? They have operating system. Okay. So, so I, like, Apple Watch has an OS, right? Mm -hmm. So dig into that. What are security flaws? Same thing. Hardware, any, you know, it's, it can be any, if you talk about today's market, it's all IoT. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're talking about. Yep. Any question? No more question, guys. Uh, yep. So. Uh, if any question, let me know. If not, then um, I, I appreciate your time uh, jumping on this uh, call. And um, if you like it, I uh, uh, would appreciate to hear back your feedback. And again, thanks for the opportunity from NJIT. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Anand, for coming out today. Um, as mentioned last week, uh, last time we, we met, uh, we are doing the $25 Amazon gift card. Uh, we will let the winner know if they if they've won the gift card. Uh, once again, thank thank you enough for coming out. Um, I believe the last time we had our event, you spoke in terms of a possible mentorship. Mm -hmm. If if that's still the case, uh, we can discuss privately, and sure. I can definitely send out the details regarding that. Uh, otherwise, if you have anything to speak about regarding that, uh, you may do so. No, sure. No, anyone reach out to Kevin offline. Uh, with this, I'm speaking to different other university and colleges, and I'm forming a group. So those students who have appeared and they show their interest. So I'm setting up a mentorship program that basically helps you understand to make you market ready. Uh, so there will be some uh, private session or. Uh, public or YouTube kind of thing, but it will be just like a specific to that group or group of students. Uh, and then there will be some other expert uh, people I know uh, from different areas of expertise, like, you know, within the IT who has many years of experience. So it's kind of give you an opportunity uh, to learn from the industry expert, right? So you can avoid those mistakes, which basically will help you accelerate in your career as a for some, it takes 15 years for the same career to get in there. It may save you five years, honestly speaking. So there's a lot because the way the technology is moving, you follow that. That's the mentorship program is paid, but again, uh, uh, for this, like NJIT students and other, where I get the speaking opportunity, I'm offering free of cost. Absolutely no cost for you guys. So, but there will be limited number of students and where I need to see why you're interested and then uh, we'll pick up those students. All right. All right. That sounds fantastic. All right. So um, anyone who's interested, please get in contact with me or Anon and we can set something up. Uh, but otherwise, thank you everybody for coming and being interested in the event. And I hope to see all of you next time. All righty. Thank you. Bye.
Bye. Thank you. Thanks.